I got the Romy G back on the table. If you've missed the other videos, I'll brush up real quick with the rifle. So this is basically the Romanian's version of the National Guard rifle. It, it, it's kind of weird. Um, I'll post what I can find for information right here. Anyway, this rifle is special in the AK community. Well, if you own an SOT, it's a different story because then you can actually have an AK the way it's supposed to be. But the G rifle, or the Romy G, is identified by a black stripe on the stock, the G on the trunnion, and what makes it special is these were converted to semi-auto. So if you're a purist and you want something as close as possible to the original weapon that actually is out there, if you build a Romy G, because we have to have semi-auto in the civilian world, you can build very close to the original rifle. Like it will still have your full auto markings, but it won't do anything in full auto because they make these semi-auto. And that's what's nice about the Romy G. You can build this, build it correct, and it's actually correct because this was a semi-auto rifle. Well, it was a full auto rifle that was converted to semi-auto. Anyway, so we got some range testing done. First things first, obviously you gotta zero it. All right, so here's my target. The very first shot went right here. Um, that was my fault. I forgot to move the rear sight up. It was still on, what is it, P? And it should be on the number two for 25 yards. Now when you go to 100, you're supposed to move it up to the number three. I forgot to do that. So the very first shot went high, and I'm like, oh yeah, duh, I gotta move the rear sight. Now remember, this is all brand new stuff. This rifle's never been shot before. It's all brand new parts. So then I moved it, bam, right where I wanted it. I'm like, whoa, that's pretty good. The person who built this clearly did a good job because I didn't have to screw the sights at all. Normally, like, well, I shouldn't say normally, a lot of AKs, you'll have to, like, push this drum way over to one side because they put the front sight on canted or something to that effect, and they just do a poor job building it so that when you go to shoot it, the zero will be all jacked up, and you have to do a bunch of work to get it zeroed. Uh, if you're buying an AK, you absolutely need to get this tool. I mean, you can work around it not getting it. I'll put a link in the description where you can get one of these. So anyway, I'm like, well, maybe that was luck. I'll try a second. I'll, well, the idea was I was going to do a three-round group. So I shot right here, and then my target tipped, and then my other two shots went like this. So I didn't want to count those, but they were all nice and tight. So I'm like, eh, it's probably pretty good. So after that, let's, let's see what you'll group. So this is the grouping results. The very ver worst one was 7.26 MOA. Now when I shot the groups, I went this way with them. So this was the very first group I did, 7.26, not very promising. Now the best group I did was right here. It's 0.66 inches, giving me 2.54 MOA. So what can we learn from all of this? This one got an extra shot. So this is actually a four shot group. If you count it as a three shot group and you just take the best three, it's 3.55. If you take all four, it's 6.74. So with that four shot group included, all of them added up, averaged out, this rifle is 5.30 MOA. Now, if you were to count this as a three shot group and just take the best three, it would come to 4.84 MOA. Now, looking at these groups, you can tell the ammunition is the problem here. I used Wolf 123 grain hollow point steel case. Pretty sure this is bimetal ammo. Doesn't say bimetal ammo on it, and I don't have any of the rounds left to throw a magnet on, but I'm pretty sure this is bimetal ammunition. Now, you can tell this because you'll have two that are really close together. And then you'll just have one that veers off, two that's really close together, and then one that veers off, two really close together, one that veers off, two really close together, one that veers off. 
Now these four groups, one, two, three, four, they actually look about right. Like just by the luck of the draw, three rounds in a row were very similar in charge and very similar in projectile weight. They're equally spaced apart and they're not that far off. But then you get to like these and then there's always one that's really wild. Like this one clearly needs to be wearing a helmet and drinking from a sippy because it got lost on the way to the target and went somewhere else. Same with that one, that one, and that one. If you were to just look at the groups to see what's probably the ammunition variant and what the rifle can actually do, if you took these four groups, added them up and averaged it out, it'll give you 3.68 MOA. I suspect if you were to play with the ammo and find the right ammunition for this gun or spend, you know, a little bit more than, what is it, 20 cents a projectile or a cartridge, this would probably be around a 3.5 MOA rifle, which is really good. Now, don't get me wrong, even on the worst side of things, 5.03 MOA, that's about what I see in AKs, anywhere from 3 to 6 MOA, 6 being on the outside, 3 being on the inside. I do believe this rifle could perform on the inside if I played with the ammo, tried to find the right ammo. But it, this has got trigger slap. As you'll notice in my grouping videos, I think it was this group right here. I actually had to switch fingers because my finger was getting sore. Now, it's not the worst trigger slap I felt out of an AK. I had, what was it, a Mac, a Mac 90. That had trigger slap so bad, even with a big, thick work glove on it, I struggled to make it through one magazine. Usually I got about halfway through and I'm like, forget it, I'm not even shooting this anymore. This one's about halfway, because like I had a Wasser 10 that had no trigger slap. Well, I mean, it was there, but it was just annoying. It didn't actually cause pain. Then I had the Mac 90, which felt like you were putting your finger on a mouse trap. Like, that was bad. It would leave a purple mark and everything. This is about halfway. I think if you were to take this apart, throw maybe one, yeah, probably one, maybe two Huggadugas on it. Eh, maybe three Huggadugas. This would be okay. Just go in there with a Dremel, throw like three Ugga Duggas on it, and it'd be good to go. I don't feel like the pins are that far off to where it's not fixable. So the question comes, if this rifle was actually for sale, would I pursue it and try to buy it? Probably. I mean, it's got a lot of things I don't like. This is a big one. This is the worst front end I've ever dealt with on an AK. Because it's a rock and lock magazine, yeah, as the receiver wears out, it'll get easier to do. But right now, where everything's brand new, it's really hard to insert the magazine because you can't just get a good rock. Normally, I'd start like damn near like this, come in, and then rock it in. This one, you got to start almost in the latch position. So you got to get it like just perfect and then rock it in. If you come in a little bit weak, It doesn't like to rock. Now it's doing great in front of the camera, but before I was really struggling with it. And then coming out, normally on an AK, I'd just go all the way forward until it basically just fall, falls out. This one I can't. It stops you right here. Not cool at all. And if you're doing an AK build, I strongly recommend do not go with this grip. It's terrible. The only part where I really found it was good, here I'll play the video real quick. Now I know what you're thinking. Those Pretty little groups are awesome and all, but how does it perform in the real world? Like actual combat. So let's try it out.
I gotta say, this hand grip really makes it difficult to change mags because you just can't get a good angle on it. It doesn't work well at all. As far as everything else seems to be okay, lots of trigger slap makes it very uncomfortable to shoot. It's an AK. I mean, there's not really a whole lot to say there. Is holding it above your head like this, it's easy to figure out where your bore is pointed just because you got two arms and you can kind of like line it up like that and it worked out okay. The overall build quality of this, like I said earlier, I think he did a really good job because I didn't even have to screw with the zero. It was dead nuts right out of his basement, I guess you would call it. Everything seems really correct. Yes, the lower receiver still needs to be finished and... Other than that, he did a pretty good job. And like I said, I've shot it now. I'm not seeing anything out of the ordinary. No crazy wear anywhere. Everything looks good. It didn't jump out of the rail while I was shooting it. It's hilarious they say a nine-year-old can do this. Maybe one that's threatened with communism and public execution if they don't do it right. I've never seen anybody successfully get this on without serious practice. That's just ridiculous. A nine-year-old, just some random nine-year-old can clean this maintenance and fire it without a problem. But anyway, if you like to check out any of my other videos with this, I'll have a link up here. If you like to check out just any other random videos, I'll have a link up here. If you like to help support the channel, I got my Patreon. Also, I got affiliate links in the description down below. Just by clicking on the link and doing your Amazon shopping, I get a little kickback from it because you went there from my channel. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe.